This week, The Garage with Dennis is gonna take you to somewhere special. Boost Power Marina is one of the premier Don't boat- stop, Marina. You're already here and it's Boost Power Marina. This week on The Garage with Dennis, we're taking you to somewhere special. Boost Power Marine is one of the premier boat manufacturers in the whole universe and they build pickles of This week on The Garage with Dennis, we're taking a special trip to Boost Power Marina. One of the premier... You're not taking a trip. You're, you're not taking a trip here, and it's not a marina. Marine! Marine! We'd be floating right now. We'd be outside. We'd be outside. Fire! This week on The Garage with Dennis, we are... Action. This week, The Garage with Dennis is doing something unique. We're talking boats. I'm at Boost Power Marine in beautiful Southern California to talk to one of the premier builders of both engines and boats in the industry. My new friend Alexi is gonna take me on a tour through his engine shop and check out some of the coolest boats you've ever seen. Let's go take a peek. Oh. Oh. From our studio in Southern California, the hotbed of car culture, covering all things automotive. Welcome to In the Garage with Dennis. Here's your host, Dennis Pitsenbarger. All right, I'm inside, and Alexi, man, uh, this is some cool stuff sitting around here. I mean, I, I've always joked about having my little water Camaro, my old Stars and Stripes Mastercraft, but walking around the shop, I've seen everything from 900 horsepower motors to, you know, cool pickle forks. I mean, what is this all about here? Well, Boost Power is a high-performance marine engine manufacturer and parts distributor for uh, the ultra-elite clientele we have in the marine business. And what we do here is we create custom engines, and of course we have our standard line of engines that we use for uh, high-performance new boats or uh, a restore project. How long have you been doing this? I started the business officially in 1986, just before I finished high school. And really after 1990 is when I got going as a corporation, more so, you know, legal matters and stuff like that and advertising and uh, just evolved from there. One of the things I thought was interesting when we were talking was you would have thought a lot of your business would have been, you know, all the crazies at Lake Havasu or down in Miami, but you're really a, an international business. Yeah, I was fortunate to have some family members abroad that helped me get uh, market penetrated in certain areas. And we do a lot of business in Australia, New Zealand, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Turkey, pretty much all over over there because there's limited um, resources there for this kind of elite market that we're in. So we end up shipping a lot of product that way along with engines and powertrain. You talked about starting this, kind of getting into it in the mid 80s and uh, obviously starting a little bit more in the mid 90s and we both dated ourselves. There's a picture right. I'm sure of us with a mullet each. Right. But um, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the boat industry? Because, I mean, when I look at this stuff in other forms of media, I mean, it went from 80, 90 miles an hour being the elite boat to now approaching 200 miles an hour. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because a 100 mile an hour boat usually went 80. It went 100 miles an hour on the bar, but out on the water it went 80. <laughs> and nowadays it's changed so much because now they're really going 100 miles an hour. And, you know, a lot of boats can go 100 plus miles an hour. And now we're approaching 200 miles an hour for the ultra elite client base. To get that kind of power, um, you know, I know I want to take a walk around the shop and look at the mechanics because some of so much of it is different, but yet the same. I mean, I've had a chance to talk to so many great engine builders that build drag motors or you know uh, high performance car motors, but it's such a difference between the two. I mean, application wise, though I, I've already said it, so much alike, but yet so much different. Right. I try to explain it in a way where, like, a marine engine is a hundred percent duty cycle almost its whole running time based on hours. So imagine a car engine, you know, you do a drag race and it's a quarter mile, it's a matter of seconds. And then you're, you know, light load the rest of the time. In a boat, you're 100% loaded like you are at the end of the quarter mile for 100 miles. Wow. Now, does that have to do with, or does that change or change your perspective on how you build the motors? Because I know that 
Uh, a couple of those motors, like the one I mentioned, that 900 cubic inch motor, I thought it would be like a tall deck Chevy, and these are really things that you're building yourself right out of your own design. Right, we do a, a series of engine blocks that are billet, and now we have a cast for a large cubic inch engine, but the goal was to make the horsepower and torque levels that we need for the boats without having to over rev or overwork a smaller cubic inch engine, which is what we've been fighting since day one, because we started out with 454s and worked our way up from there. Now. Before we go jump in the shop and look around, the one thing about the boating industry is, man, drag racing, you, you know, if you have a fast car, you have a 10 second car. Right. If you do circle track racing like me, you prep all week for a 15 minute race. Right. Boats are just fun, man. I mean, and I, I miss my little Mastercraft and I'm gonna add a boat to my collection pretty soon. But the thing about boats, and you gotta tell me from dealing with so many of your clientele, it's just, it's such a fun industry. It really is. It's a lot of fun because it's usually a weekend hobby, not just a quarter mile. It's usually a daily or weekend full event. So guys can go out and have a good time, water ski with their family, and then go out about six o'clock and find the nearest you know, hot rod looking boat and go for a blast. <laughs> I love it. We gotta do this now. He's gonna take me into the engine room and to take a look at some of these boats, including a, a pickle fork that I don't know if I gotta sell both kidneys or a few of my internal organs to see if I can own, but you gotta take a peek at this. Let's go jump in the shop. Great. Before we take a look at this crazy triple supercharged setup for a marine application, I wanna talk about one of our sponsors, Royal Purple. Royal Purple's HPS is recommended for vehicles no longer under warranty and for those seeking a higher level of performance and protection. It's fortified with high levels of ZDDP anti-wear additives and Royal Purple's proprietary additive, Centerlec. Independent tests have shown that HPS outperforms leading synthetic and conventional oils in gasoline and diesel engines. Now, Alexi, this thing is from the mind of a madman. I'm expecting goggles and a white coat and one of those electro deals going off in the background. I mean, this thing's crazy. And you were telling me something that really blew me away was the way you had it set up for the actual induction with being able to literally turn one of these off or on or even just bleed one out for less or more power. Yeah, we've gotten into the market of uh, uh, options. So customers are seeking options these days. Uh, just kind of like a diesel truck has like a tuner where you go from you know stage one, stage two, all the way through stage who knows, right? Yeah. So what we've done here is we started out with an 18 degree pro stock custom intake manifold with port fuel injection. And these, these triple superchargers are designed for larger 600 plus cubic inch engines. So they're smaller, they compress better for acceleration and it has really, uh, really efficient rotors within. These are the 2300 TVS Magnuson rotors that are eat, you know, Eaton Magnuson. And we've developed a four inch water to water intercooler for that. And the way this works is when you set it up on the engine, because it's drive by wire throttle bodies, what we can do is we can simply m manipulate the, 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 the uh, throttle positions of each blade, regulating the horsepower and the computer, of course, knows by, by the mapping related to the uh, stage. And you, and you said it could literally, you could be running along at a mere 800 horsepower uh -huh. and just turn the wick up and have 1500. Right, all of a sudden on the fly, it'll just recalibrate and it's basically seamless. It's amazing how technology, even in the boat industry, especially with electronics, has made it, the tunability is just infinite now. Right, right. It uses a common plenum and what happens is um, each, each um, each throttle body regulates how much air can pass through the supercharger. So basically it is for options. Now, one of the things that really kind of is a major difference is how you get all this amazing power to the ground, so to speak. Now, cars, torque converter, a power glider, a Lenko and a drag car, but it's all about outdrives. Now let's go over here and take a look because it's definitely a different world when it comes to getting the power on the water. Absolutely. All right. Now, Alexi, this is probably the most perplexing part to me is how you do get the power through these things because, you know, I know there's gears in there, but I've never torn one of these things apart. So give me the specs and the digs on one of these outdrives. All right, well, the way these work is, uh, is fairly straightforward. It changes direction. So we have the crankshaft output going through the input shaft of the drive, which slides into here to a pinion gear and then goes to a forward drive gear down below and then goes down, changes direction again, 90 degrees to a propeller that thrusts the boat forward or a reverse, of course. So the way this works is, is there's a clutch in here and these items shift. Now this particular type of drive is only rated for five to 600 horsepower. Of course, everybody abuses that and goes eight, 900 on them. Sure. Therefore they go through the gears and 
you know, change them every year or they damage them. Well, you were talking about this gear in my, in, in my right hand is one for like a normal boat. And of course, right. more power, bigger gears to right. handle so you're not shearing these off with the one in my left hand. Right. So what is kind of the, the weak point in these? Because there's got to be a weak point where sometimes they just break and you got to put these boosted pieces in there. Right. Well, when you exceed the... Uh, sheer size and strength design of the drive, you tend to roll the gears over, which you can see if you look closely there. Um, when you get into the higher horsepower, these are a little bit bigger gears, so they have a, a quite a bit more strength to be able to apply the high horsepower to the propeller. One advantage a boat has, though, is there's always some point of slippage, where like a car is always hooked up one-to-one -one because once the slicks grip and bite, it's one-to-one. -one. In a boat, you have prop slip. So you get away with a little more uh, leeway because you have that a little bit of room of slippage there to be able to keep them. So in other words, you can use a little bit less strength parts to get away with certain things. Of course, that depends on the boat. Now, one of the things I was wondering about is the ratio. Uh, how many times the revolution and the cranks turning versus going to the prop. Is that something that's adjustable to maybe tailor to a customer or what the object is, maybe at getting the boat out of the hole for skiers or maybe that top speed boat? Right, absolutely. They're all designed for different weights of boats and top speeds and usage. Most common gear ratios in these standard Bravo smaller drives is one and a half or 1.35, 3.6. There's a couple different gear ratios there to apply the horsepower to the uh, propeller. And the larger drives, they go all the way up to one to one or real close to it because they really need to get that propeller going high speed. Now, one of the things that's gotta be the coolest art, I think, in power boating is the prop. Um, I had a couple different props for my little boat. If I wanted to go a little quicker and maybe just fart around on the lake, or if I wanted to pull skiers out, Props can go anywhere from $500 to $25,000, and oh, yeah. that is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, milled out of pure pieces of aluminum. It's really an art. It is. The propellers, there's several different designs. There's two blades for V-drive style boats. Then it goes into three blades and four blades for your common runabout. And then when you get into the large number six drives and some of the new M8 drives that Mercury puts out with high horsepower engines of ours and theirs, you get into props that have five and six blades, which are definitely eight to $12,000 and sometimes more each. Wow, it's amazing. And sometimes you got to buy them and try them. Oh, that could be a, that could be, that's why we have you test boats. Right. The next thing I want to do is run over and look at some boats. I mean, there's one over there with not only two superchargers, but two, su two turbochargers as well. Right. So let's put this stuff down and let's go start looking at some cool Sounds boats. Sounds great. Now, if you're a fan of boats or you're just going to become a fan of boating from watching this episode, one thing for, is for sure. You don't want to be stuck on the water. These guys use Craftsman tools for one good reason. They know how to do the job right. Now, make sure if you get a chance, go to Craftsman.com and become part of the Craftsman Club. Craftsman, made to make. All right, I could not walk by this boat without getting some info on it. I was telling you earlier, you know, I loved my little stars and stripes, but I want a day cruiser. This is a day cruiser, as they say, with the knob turned to 11. I mean, tell me about this boat. Well, this is a Shiata 21 River Cruiser V-Drive boat. Very popular, almost like a little cult following of these type of customers. We personally built this one. The owner of Shiata Boats is Lee Spindler. He's a friend of mine. We wanted to build the ultimate super cruiser, we call it. So it's a very heavy built boat with a lot of horsepower. So what we've done here is we've set it up to where we have a compound supercharged engine that's adjustable from 900 to, you know, 2,400 horsepower. Holy smokes. Right on the fly. Wow. And what goes in, you said you talked about being a heavy boat. Uh, more construction in the stringers and kind of that backbone of the boat? Right. Well, the history of these Shiatas is they were built for ski racing. So they pull water skiers 220 feet back at high speeds and, you know, it needs to be able to plow the water and leave a great wake behind them. So these are a big boat in a small package. We talked about, you know, sometimes it being a fun sport. It can also be an expensive sport. This would be, I think, on the extreme side, if I'm not mistaken. What would something like this run the average guy? Well, the average guy would probably pay somewhere in the 150 dollars to $200,000 range for a boat like this. 
This particular one, because of the exotic laminates that are in it, and of course the powertrain package, is in excess of 350,000. Wow, well I tell you what, it is absolutely gorgeous, but I hate to tell you this, it's not on my price list, so you have to find me something from the back of the shop. Sounds good. I want to take a look now also, I want to run over and look at that orange boat. You, you told me some little goodies on it. It is probably the most gorgeous pickle I've ever seen in my life, and it is just from top to bottom, custom everything, including a huge motor package. Let's go take a peek at that. Sounds great. All right, I am sitting in what I've now been educated on, a pickle fork design catamaran boat, 28 feet of the most gorgeous set of aluminum and steel and fiberglass I've ever seen in my life, man. This thing is disgustingly sick, man. Tell me about this boat. Well, this is a early model Cougar catamaran. It's 28 feet long. It's a catamaran design. And what's unique about this particular boat is its cockpit size, very deep cockpit where it has a driver's seat and right behind you a jump seat and the rear bench where most of them don't have that. Most of them only have driver, passenger and rear bench. So that's one of the unique parts of the interior of this boat. The other feature of this boat is the gentleman spared no cost in rebuilding this boat from ground up, from its gel coat to the wiring to the elaborate stereo that's within it. Yeah, I mean, pearl gel coat. Yeah. That is, you know you've made it and arrived in the boat scene when right. you have a pearl uh, gel right. coat. Right, it's got pearl, crushed glass, multiple stages of clear in the gel coat. It's really a masterpiece. And obviously one of your masterpiece sitting back here powering it. Tell me about the motor. Well, the motor is one of our 1,175 horsepower twin supercharged engines, all fuel injected, computer controlled. And this gentleman's request was, I want to be able to start idle around a dock and have no worries about getting in and out of a marina have it quiet, and still have the power when, when he needs it. So we developed a twist to one of our engines to where he could have all that ski ability at 10 miles an hour pulling kids on tubes to going 125 miles an hour fully loaded with a huge swim step and all the you know bells and whistles this monster is equipped with. Now one of the things I know that we can find you on is social networking, of course. Uh, just simply go to boostpower.com and follow the basic directions. And uh, we're, we're always available to do any type of services from the uh, trailer all the way to whatever is in the boat. Cool. And I know you got Facebook and Twitter pages along we can follow too. Absolutely. Okay. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media, we're there. Now, one of the things that I might have just came up with is we call this the garage with Dennis. If I spend more time in this guy's shop, we're going to have to call it at the marina with Dennis. So. I don't know about you, maybe we got a sister show in the works for you, but until that time comes, make sure and go to thegaragewithdennis.com, check out our Facebook and Twitter pages, and of course, check out our sponsors. We definitely want to thank Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms, and of course, Craftsman, made to make. Until that time comes, I got to go buy some lottery tickets, because man, I tell you what, I got to have one of these boats. We'll see you in the next show. <laughs>